死に寝かし So since we have no idea when this is going to come out for uh, the Americas, if it ever will, uh, I'm going to play the Japanese version of Monster Hunter Double Cross. So I started getting into the series at the third generation, which was uh, on the Wii U, rather. There was the option to play it on the Wii, but I went for the Wii U version first. Uh, and that's when I started playing with the Legends in our free time, which you can find our pl uh, playthrough of that on the YouTube channel. Uh, I got pretty, pretty psyched up about that and started really getting into the series after that. So, yeah, I've already played through Generations, which was the American release of Monster Hunter Cross. And... Hold on. I his voice. And I really enjoyed that one, and I'm still playing that one with friends. Uh, well, I will admit that... Uh, that Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate is probably the better package overall. I did really enjoy my time with Generations, so hopefully this is mostly the same game and I can probably just breeze right through it. Uh, I'm gonna find out a voice. Alright, uh, this is her? Yep. Alright, so here are the styles. We got Guild Style, Striker style, style, Aerial Style, Adept Style, Brave Style, and Alchemy? Ren Keen? Uh, not sure what Alchemy is going to do, but uh, to start off, I am going to be doing Adept, uh, and we are going to pick... Well, hold on. Style... Wind Force... Where do I change my weapon? Eh. I'll, I'll change it shortly, but we're going to go Adept to start off with, and we're also going to be using Striker Style and Aerial Style for a little bit, but then we're also going to try out the Brave Style, and once I research what the other one is a bit more, then we're going to start using that one. And for each type, I'm going to be specializing in a particular weapon. Two of them I'm already pretty good at using on my own in Generations. Uh, the other two, not as much, and the only time I've really played them has been, like, in the arena in Generations, and then in the demo here. So this is Berna. I believe this is a new location strictly for, uh, strictly for Monster Hunter Generations and Double Cross. Not entirely sure. Alright, so, this is Appearance, this is Gear... Okay, so Adept Style, I'm going to be using Charge Blade. 
And, uh, let's see. My set, though. This is register set. So we're going to have a registered set of this. And then we're going to set the art to being the energy blade. Uh, Obari Mito. Is that right? Escape. Okay, this. This might not be what I'm looking for right now. Uh, we'll find out. Alright, so we're gonna set this. And then. Gonna equip the bow. We're gonna have striker style on this one. Set these as. intended. Register this as set two. I'm gonna. Bow. Don't worry, I've already put a time code as to when this whole setting up is gonna be all good and done with. Alright. Put a charge blade. Some of the locals are going to be telling us, hey, yo, this is a facility that you can be using. Uh, I will explain those as they come up. It's telling the way to multiplayer. Is this guy going to give me my style, my uh, hunter arts? Uh, I only have those three still, right? No, it looks like they unlock more. Uh, Ekis Hunter, uh, X Hunter, uh, Burasto, nope, Dur Durants, Torrance, okay. I'm looking for energy, energy blade, Enurigi Enu Buredo. Mm. Must not be here. Alright. I also want to check something in the options. Let's see. Hunter Notes. Friends list, chat, status, okay, guild card, options, there we go. Option, default probably, camera, scope. semi-auto. Probably gonna have to change the bow controls in a, like later on once I figure out which one it is. Option chat. This is resetting the options back to regular. Alright, well, I'll figure it out later. For now, though, we gotta talk to the Burn Chief. And then do our first quests. Yada, 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 yada. Okay, so the thing with Monster Hunter is that you hunt monsters, but you can also gather materials, and that's what these are all for. Uh, in my own time, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and do those, but here we gotta slay some regular Macau, and Macau are the, uh, let's see, Macau are the new Jaggy or uh, Velocipre of this game. I'm trying to figure out what these are right now, it doesn't look easy to determine, but um, this one will give us 10 health if it comes through for us, this one will give us 25 stamina. Uh, stamina is always nice to have. I believe uh, 50 extra stamina per meal is the best way to go. By the way, um, meal before going out to hunt because it'll give you extra perks. I can't really understand what any of these are right now. Uh, let's see, this is Kokoto Sauce. Shunato. Uh, Janbo, Janbo. But as you can see, these are uh, skills in the middle column there. I'm going to assume that this is... Uh, attack up.
In which case, I'm going to get Polisher, which is going to speed up the time it takes to polish my weapons with a whetstone. Here's our inventory. We don't have anything currently able to be picked up. So we're just going to have to rely on what the guild sends us for the quest. And we're into the thick of things. This is our guild box. We can pick up the supplies that the guild has sent us. All of these that I'm picking up are going to... Well, okay. Most of the things I've picked up there are going to be returned at the end of the hunt. There are a few things that are called supply items, and those will be returned at the end of the hunt. Other things, such as the poison coating or the empty files, will be kept after the hunt. And it's easy to denote which one is which by going into your inventory, like so. And you can see the yellow text at the bottom of the like of the item description. That just means supply item and those will be returned. So this is a first aid med. They are your healing. Uh, every quest will give you healing. This is a ration that will increase your stamina by 25, or 25 points. Stamina goes down uh, every notch, every now and then. I think the more the more actions you do as a hunter, the faster it depletes. This is a map. Uh, it'll show you what the map layout is. If you look on the top right of the screen, you can see where we are in area one and where all the other areas are. This is a whetstone. This sharpens your bladed weapons, or your, your blade master weapons. This is a paintball. It marks the location of large monsters. This is an empty file used for coatings for the bow. This is a portable spit. Uh, which will let you cook raw meat, if you don't know what raw meat is. These guys, Laranoth, will drop raw meat. Any herbivore in the game is likely to drop raw meat for you, and the meat itself can be used to cook and increase your stamina even more. So upon slaying a Laranoth or any other monster, they go through a little dying animation. Give them a minute there. Alright, and now you can carve the monsters. So if you hold down the A button, you can continually carve. This is only a feature in Generations and Double Cross. Uh, and they dropped some raw meat for us. So if we go into our inventory by holding L, navigate you to the portable spit using uh, A and Y. That just means so tasty, and we have made a well-done steak. That will increase our stamina by two notches instead of the rations one, and well-done steaks will also have some extra effects to them later on. Here are the Macau. These little velociraptor type things. They are the first bird wyvern we get to fight here. They like to travel in packs as well. So, if you look at the top left of the screen right now, you'll see that there is a sword that has some uh, chips in it. That just means that my sharpness has gone down tremendously. And that means that monsters will not be stunned as easily, nor will I be doing a whole lot of damage to them. And if they are a large monster, I will have the potential to be knocked back if I, hurt, if I try to hit a part of the monster that is too tough normally to actually deal any significant damage to. What I'm doing in the field right now is a whole bunch of regular sword attacks, and if you pay attention, if I continue to do damage in the sword form as the charge blade, I'm building up energy for the files up at the top left. Uh, they're turning red right now, and if I do too much damage before I recharge... Let me see if I can land a few more hits. Nope. All right, well, the sword itself is now pure red, meaning I pretty much bounce off of anything, regardless of what I try to do. So I'm going to need to sharpen soon. And sharpening is done. That Macau despawned before I could carve it. Uh, to replenish your sharpness, you need to use a whetstone, and these that's what these mini whetstones are for. So by polishing it, it returns it up to a higher status of sharpness. Now then, the files for the charge blade 
benefit your axe form, which is this. So the axe form, you move around slower than if you were in the sword and shield form. You also can't block. Uh, but you can swing a giant axe. And that's cool. But with the files, if you press the A button, you can swing it and you discharge energy. So you've got a simple three combo here. Just by press pressing A three times. That final swing does a ton of damage, and now it returns you back to sword and shield form. Now you can just recharge your file count by holding the shield button. This is the adept shield, which is a parry, if you time it correctly. And then you just press A to charge up your files if you got energy stored up. If you don't, it just does that, so be wary of that. Uh, other things the sword and shield can do, you can do a dash attack. You can charge up this attack with A, and then let fly a uh, double swing. That one charges up your file energy pretty well. Uh, this shield bash move will ignore armor. Or, like, if you have low sharpness, it's a good way of dealing damage without bouncing off. And another thing is that if you do the element discharge, but then press R during it, you will store the energy into your shield. So now you have extra properties added to it. So let me see if I can get them to attack me here. Mistimed that. It'll probably be easier for me to do on an actual large monster, so I'll save that for then. But now our shield bash will do explosive damage, and our defense is actually upped by holding the shield. These little bug things are the Banabra. They're nice and fun to have to deal with. They're not threatening. Their armor sets are usually pretty good for bow users. And they are also very fragile. You can't take them on with, like, with regular weapons if you really want to skin them, because it's very rare that they will drop to the ground upon death, and allowing you to carve them. And even then, it's not guaranteed that you'll get what you want from them, because they have, like, three different drop things, or, like, three different item drops. One of them's super rare as well. So, in order to get around that, you have to use poison. If you kill a Banabra using poison, it will immediately drop to the ground and let you skin... Uh, yeah, it'll let you skin them. Most insectoid-type monsters will do that as well. So, there are some monsters that you can just brute force them to get what you want out of them. Other things you need to be more, a bit more crafty with. The Macau and Banabra are a good uh, lesson for that. So, let me see here quest is kill 10 Macau, and we've got 9, so we've got one more to go. One more thing about the charge blade is that if you have energy built up, and you have a charged shield, go into axe form, use the element discharge, you'll do the super move, and it does more damage if you have more files available to, uh, to consume. If not, then you just kind of swing your axe pretty strongly. Those things are Alteroth. They're harmless, pretty much. And they like to scou scour for mushrooms. Once they inhale what they what they need, you can attack them. And usually, once I deal enough damage with my really crappy sharpness right now, they'll drop shinies. And these shinies are unique only to the Alteroth. Uh, specific, okay, these specific shinies, I mean. Because they are ripened mushrooms and whatnot. So, if you decide to wait on a monster to do something, such as the Alteroth going to get mushrooms, or a large monster going for an aerial attack and you snipe him out of the air, uh, they will drop shinies. And the shinies are usually rare items that you can't normally get that easily. So, fulfilling certain requirements on dealing damage to a monster will net you better rewards. That was the first quest clear. And now we get rewards. So these are Macau Hides and Macau Scales. We also got the fangs from them. I believe these are wyvern fangs, or bird wyvern fangs. We got more hide here. This is a nitro shroom, it seems like. Uh, nitro... Da... Dake? Yeah. Nitro shroom. Uh, crafting ingredient. You can actually craft in this game. Uh, simple items for regular crafting, but then you can also combine monster parts to make your own armor. 
and weapons. And that's really helpful. I don't know if we have enough to make a new charge blade yet, or a new bow. Let's find out. So, the blacksmith over here is the guy you need to report to in order to buy new weapons and to craft new weapons. This, I believe, is buying new armor. This is selling. Oh, no. Uh, let me check that out again. Do, do, do. Okay, no, this is crafting. So, we have access to uh, two more charge blades, but it looks like we need iron ore and earth crystals for this one. I'm guessing that based on the uh, icons that are listed right there. This is a level up to the one we currently have, and I believe that's just like stone and uh, earth crystals as well. No, these require the same thing. But this one has higher damage output and the sharpness right underneath the damage number of 60 and 70, respectively. It has a larger bar for yellow, meaning it would take longer for it to go down a sharpness level. This one has more damage, but also has the same sharpness pretty much as the other one. So it's important to keep note of what your weapons can do, contrary to other types of weapons that you have available. So the bow, for instance, again, earth crystal iron ore, we need to mine for those. This is uh, a monster bone small needed with earth crystals, probably. Uh, sit, sit, chak, ro, wait, sit, chak, ro, adi, kudo, ai, ah, whatever. It's a bug. We need a carpenter bug, probably. So those are our available options for those. We can also craft armor. Some of these right off the bat are not able to be crafted just because we don't have the requisite materials. Uh, some of them we already do have and are equipped with. Uh, we can also upgrade with armor spheres for the armor, and if you have the requisite uh, materials for this, which is in this case any low-grade ore, we can level them up, or once it reaches a higher level, upgrade into something new entirely. I'll demonstrate that later once I have the... have everything I need. Do you have anything new? Do not. Cool. Uh, I'll show off the bow next. Thankfully, since the uh, starter, like starter armor, is able to be used with both blade masters and gunners, which are the two different weapon class types. Uh, you don't have to change out armor right away, but once we start unlocking more available recipes to craft new armor and whatnot, we're going to need to specialize in blade master and gunner armor. So this is the Palico Ranch. Palicos are uh, teammates that you can recruit to your cause just whenever. This is the uh, Head Meowstress, I believe, is what her name was in Generations. She's explaining just how to summon Palicos, and this is her scouting, I'm pretty sure. If you want to have a Palico look like a particular thing, these are, yeah, Palicos are cats. Then you can ask her to search for things of that nature. This is the tail. And this is the voice. So she's gonna send out a call for palicos of that nature. And we can recruit them. Uh, actually, sure. Let me uh, let me just stick with this. Oop, hang on. Okay, figured it out. She has some more things to talk about. This is a uh, hunt, a village quest that she is giving us, and I believe we can check that out with. Where is it? Uh, 
constant. Uh, no. Nope. Nope. That's the help. Aha, <laughs> here we go. Uh. Shaggy. Hmm. Well, I'll figure, I'll figure those out later, but pretty much these are subquests to achieve out in the world, in the world, and then you go back to the person that sent you on the quest, and you give them what they need, and you're sent off with some new stuff, so it's all good. Uh, these are who, to who we can recruit. Beast. That's a new category of Palico I've never seen before. But we've got the fight, the fighter type. Palico, which is usually very aggressive and will have skills based around that. The defensive one, uh, similar principle, except now on the defense and will have more to shield you with. This is gathering, I want to say. Uh, correcto. Correcto. Oh, yeah, collect. So these will collect items for you. More often than not. Not will usually be fighting. Don't know what beast mode is. Bomber type will also be throwing a lot of bombs at people. Uh, we can recruit any of these. I'll go for... Can't have a look at them right now. But I shall hire. Hire. So now we have two Palicos for use. We can set them. Right here. Alright. There they are. Look at them go. They're just hanging out. One's... Deep blue, or deep baby blue. Uh, Otomosu Scout. Otomo Scout. Oh yeah, there's a way I can change the, uh, the color of it, can I? Target, report. F oh, right, this is the type. Yeah. This is. I think the skill set? Is there really no way I can set the color of the palico I want? Because there's, there's one color that I'm looking for. Maybe I can't use that yet. Or, wait a minute. Okay, nope. I'll figure it out later. Oh well. Okay, moving on. Looks like the... Guild Mistress, the Burna Gal, has some new quests available. We gotta hunt some Jaggies. So that is the uh, that is the village quest that the the head Meowstress, the lady we just talked to at the feline farm. That's the quest that she gave us. You can see that it has a yellow speech bubble and the Burna icon at the far left. Uh, that will tell you that it is a village quest and someone wants you to do that for them. And again, not necessarily re required for you to do. Uh, so, we are going to do that. And in my spare time, I am going to be doing the other quests. Not overly important to worry about right now. Okay, so this one has a chef's hat at the far right of the selection area. And it's pretty much telling you the chef is fired up. So the skill rate of what you pick is going to be is going to have a higher chance of occurring. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go with this one. I believe that the second option available to us on that list is attack up, and we would have been able to see what. Um, 
we would have been able to see that one of the options was blurred out for the bow because it's feline polisher and that only affects blade masters. So that's a good way for me to understand which one is which. But anyway, we've eaten. Let's go on the quest. We don't have many other uh, items to work with, but we don't need them right now. We're just hunting small fries. But now that we're using the bow, I can demonstrate what the poison coating can do. And unfortunately, you can only carry 15 on you at a time, which is why this one is now grayed out, because we can't take more than... Uh, oh, sorry, 20 can only be on you at one time, and you can't exceed that amount. But now we're here at the nighttime variant of this map, which I'm blanking on the name right now, and I apologize. I'm going to see if I can run into some Banabra or Alteroth. Oh, these are some Kelby. These are also herbivores, and they will give you raw meat, I'm pretty sure. But, uh, they also can give you their hide. Which can be useful for some crafting, uh, crafting shenanigans. He's just running into me. Alright, so, the bow... You pull back the string, and you have three charges to use. I also, I totally forgot that in the, the uh, Japanese version of Monster Hunter, you skin these animals. In Western releases of Monster Hunter, you do not do that. So you draw back your bow. By default in Generations, it's holding R. I've rebound it in the past to being X to hold, but now X will bring up your targeting. You can just fire away. But that's not going to do a whole lot of damage. So, holding the button will grant you different levels of charge. This is number two, and for this particular uh, bow type... Let's see, I think that's a spread shot. Nope, that is another rapid shot, or a pierce shot, we'll find out. I think it's rapid. So, you do max damage if you target your opponent, or your monster from a certain distance. With a particular shot type, you need to stand a certain distance away and then let fly. That is definitely a rapid shot. So if I was to stand right around here and fire at the Kelby, which is now dead. There's another one. Boop. The screen shook a little bit, which means that it is the critical distance. You do the maximum amount of damage you can by shooting from a particular distance of any shot type. There's rapid type, there's spread type, there's pierce type. Just a whole bunch of things. And one more thing before we move on. That little uh, circle that shows up, the targeting circle, will appear a set distance away no matter what I do with the the vertical area. But if you press A during that, it's an arc shot. You shoot down a barrage of arrows. You can also do one up close, but it doesn't do as much damage. So if we were to target that Kelby over there, he's going to run out of there, though. You, stand still. Just barely out of range. Anyway, it's a good way of dealing damage from a distance. And some arc shots will have different properties, such as being able to stun, being able to break easier, to break parts easier, which we'll get into later, uh, or what have you. These are Malinxes. They will like to try to steal some of your items that you have on them. Avoid them. Or that you have on you, sorry. But we're looking for Jaggies. We have not found any yet. Which is going to make me assume that we'll need to go down to areas 9, 11, or 10. Actually, while we're here... These bone gathering spots are usually pretty good at finding for finding uh, certain things, but I believe this one only gives dung. Uh, monster, no food. Nope, found something new. All right. Uh, yep, that was dung. So, dung can be used to craft dung bombs. If a large monster is being too much of a pain in a single area, you can throw a dung bomb at them, and they will leave that area shortly thereafter. Here the Jaggies. That 
as far as the monster bones are concerned, uh, we're going to need those for a lot of crafting ingredients. Alright, uh, as you might be able to tell, we have some red bars at the bottom of our screen, right next to the, uh, the item select area. Those are our hunter arts. You can use these by, or you can gain access to these, I guess, by dealing damage to monsters, and you can then use them after accumulating enough energy. This top one is the Expert Evasion, which will sheath your weapon immediately. Or, Absolute Evasion, I'm sorry. Which will sheath your weapon immediately and will save you from taking any damage while you're in that roll. It's kind of like an Adept Dodge, where Adept Style, if you dodge or shield in the right way, you can avoid a monster's attack completely. quite tricky for me to aim using the right analog stick because I'm so used to using the D-pad, which I believe I can change in the options if I set the Hunter Arts to be something different. Right now, though, I'm going to leave them as is and worry about that later. Of course, you can also shoot the bow while you're not pulling up the targeting, but you also can't aim in any direction other than straight forward. So the bow also has a melee attack, which you can press with, which you can do with A. It's very weak, dude. You don't need to use it. Now, as far as our, as far as our other, heh, as far as our other arts, hunter arts are concerned, oh, couldn't carve that one in time. We have. I believe that is just extra speed. I believe so. I'm, I don't really recall using this one at all. That's another one of the bow's moves where you can just backstep twice, and then you can pull out your bow with, at the fully charged level 3. This is the bow's sk unique skill, which fires off three shots all at once. Does a lot of damage. Uh, if you can land all three of them. Hup. Also, it just occurred to me that the Hunter Art we did get for the Charge Blade was not Energy Blade, but it was another one of the unique ones. So I was totally wrong on that. More Jaggies! Can't hit them. There we go. Bow gameplay is kind of lame, but you may have noticed that the Hunter Arts that we do have, we have three of them, and the Charge Blade only had the one. That's because we're using Striker Style on this one. For the bow, or rather, for any weapon using the Striker Style, you don't have access to as many moves as you would Guild Style, but you also get access to three Hunter Arts as opposed to the usual one for most other styles, or two for Guild Style. So that's the benefit of Striker Style, is that you get to use your special moves a lot more frequently. Also lets you mix and match pretty pretty well. We have some Benabras in here, which is a good time for me to show off the Poison Coating. So bows also have access to coatings, and when you use them on your bow, you fire off arrows that deal more effects. So, the poison coating, as you might be able to imagine, deals poison damage. If you can land enough poison arrows on a particular monster... Let's see if I can get this guy down here. If you land enough poison shots on a monster, it will poison them. And with Benabras, as I explained earlier, if they die from poison... There we go. They drop down, so you can carve them. Poison coating is not the only way to do this. You can also craft poison smoke bombs using uh, bomb casings and to and toadstools. 
and those are very short range. Don't really require aim, you just need to make sure that they're the Bonabra is close to you and you can just poison them and wait for them to die. Also gonna be picking up a few uh, herbs here. And there are other types of useful coatings for the bow to equip, such as the paint coating, which acts as a paintball. You can shoot a painted arrow at a large monster and it'll mark it on the map. Track them wherever they go. Ugh, excuse me. And then you have Paracoating, which paralyzes the monster if you deal enough damage to them. You have Sleep Coating. Pretty much if you do enough damage with one of those, you put them to sleep. Blast Coating, do enough damage to them. You make them explode, so that's nice. There are a few other ones as well, but we'll see them once we see them. Sometimes the... I say sometimes. Usually the small monsters will not take a whole lot of damage from... Or will be very hard to hit with a bow unless you're standing still and aiming at them. Uh, so don't get discouraged right off the bat. It's going to be much easier to hit your targets later on because they'll be at eye level or higher. And unfortunately we don't have the materials to make a pickaxe. I'm pretty sure. So we can't mine any of these. Unless we had the stones... Not sure where we could find stones. Maybe we picked up a few here. Uh, we have not. Nope. That's a shame. Uh, this is our crafting materials. And we can craft some unique things. So we got a couple toadstools and some empty files to use. So we can make more pink uh, poison coating there. You also have a percentage chance to succeed. And uh, on the off chance you don't succeed, you'll just get garbage. Which cannot use in any way. We'll explore those a little more later. But, I think for now, I'm going to take a break from recording, do some off-screen uh, quests of the collecting variety, and get back to you with some more stuff. Maybe explain some more things as I go. Hopefully, we'll also get to fight our first great Macau.